How you doing? Let's make some New York style pastrami over here. Oh, forget about it. <laughs> That's right. Thanks, Tony. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Fogo Life. I'm your host, Captain Ron. That was my buddy from New York, Tony. Today, he's absolutely right. We're going to make some super duper better than Katz's Deli pastrami. And we're all going to start with this, a store-bought corned beef. <gasps> That's right. Let me show you how to do it. Now, there are multiple ways to make a pastrami, okay? First, you can start with a brisket, a whole brisket, and brine it yourself and corn it and go through the whole process. It takes about seven days. Personally, I find it a lot easier to go buy a store-bought corned beef, all right? You're going to desalinate it, which I'm going to show you how to do. Desalinate it, season it, and smoke it. It's, I've done it both ways, and I can't tell you that it's better one way or the other. I find this just to be a whole lot easier, so we're going to show you how my process works using a store-bought corned beef. Now, our first step in our process is going to be to take our store-bought corned beef and desalinate it. What that means is that we're going to soak this in water for a full day, change the water often, because it comes in the brine and it's really salty. So, what we have to do is take it out of the package, soak it in water for a day, and desalinate it. Now, the more liquid that you can get off of this, the better the head of the game you're going to be, all right? So we want to get it all, try and get as much of this liquid out of here as possible. We're going to clean this out before we soak, fill it with water. Now, your corned beef is going to have a little bit of fat. On this side, it doesn't matter too much. Just get all the little loose edges off here, okay? You don't want to have it loaded up with fat. But this side is not that important. It's the fat cap side that we have to take a look at. So, okay, so we're going to clean. I want to clean the majority of this fat cap off of here. Okay, we don't want a fatty pastrami. Nothing worse than fatty pastrami. Now, for me, this is the way I like to have it. I like to leave a little bit of fat on here. You can see this is the flat, but they did leave a little piece of the point on there. We're gonna leave that on there too. But you can see both sides pretty much clean to fat. A little bit of fat doesn't hurt. Hey, listen, fat is flavor. We all know that. As I mentioned before, we wanna desalinate this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna pop the top sides up on my little handy dandy prep tub here and cover this completely in water. You want the whole entire thing covered. So let's pour some water over and get her going. You know, I had mentioned before that there's a number of ways to do it. You can brine your own. Well, there's a lot of steps involved with that. There's a couple steps involved with this one too. So we covered it with water. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cover this thing up and I'm gonna go set it in the refrigerator for at least one day. Okay, you can do it for a little bit less, but what can happen is all that brine, is, like I mentioned, is really salty. You want to draw as much salt out of that as possible. So in one day, I'm going to change this water probably two or three times. I'm going to flip the meat a couple times. You want to get all that out of there. So our next step to the refrigerator. Now, because I love you all so much, and I do, instead of having me make to wait till next week to see, I went ahead and I pre desalinated one of these corned beefs. And here's what it looks like after a full day in the water. <laughs> It almost looks gross, doesn't it? Now, the big difference between corned beef and pastrami is the seasoning. Let me show you how to mix up the perfect pastrami seasoning. The first thing we're gonna do is all those seeds that I showed you, the peppercorn seeds, the coriander seeds, the mustard seeds, we're gonna put them into a baggie and smash them up. Yeehaw! You see this, how it looks? That's how it's supposed to look. Now, the reason we do this is because this is gonna give the, some texture, it's got chunky. And on top of that, we got one tablespoon brown sugar a tablespoon of paprika, really just to add color, two teaspoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of onion powder, and stir. And that is our seasoning. If you get some little lumps of brown sugar, that's fine. Just make sure you break them up. That's all. And that is our seasoning. Our seasoning is all ready. Our next step is to season up our meat. So let's whip out our meat and we'll put some seasoning on it. Seasoning the meat is really simple. Now, I didn't completely dry it off. We patted it dry a little earlier, but a little bit of moisture on there does not hurt because it's going to help the rub to adhere. So, I'm going to take our rub, take our prep tub, I'm going to pop it up one level like that, and just pour some rub over the top, then just spread it around and push it in. You want to push it into this meat. Now that we got our meat seasoned, we're going to let this sit. I want to let it sit for at least a half hour or so, something like that. This way, that seasonings, all the moisture comes out, pulls those seasonings in. You know how that works. So in the meantime, let's get the egg started. We're gonna use super premium because we're gonna do some smoking. We're gonna use some bourbon barrel chunks for flavor. Let me just touch on that for a second. A lot of people like to use cherry for pastrami. It's a really great flavor for this. I actually love this for everything these days. So this is what I'm using is these bourbon barrel chips, uh, chunks, and a couple things to cover while we're waiting for this to heat up. So you notice I put the blazer ball with the fire starters in there first, lit it, and then poured the charcoal on. To me, it's a great way of smoking. We make videos on how to smoke in Big Green Eggs, so check that out. But also, the last thing we have to do before we put this on, we're going to put our meter thermometer in here. It's a wireless probe. We're going to put it right into the center, 
So we're gonna measure about that far. It's gonna go that far into our meat and gonna stick it right in the center of the side of the meat. And she's ready to go on, so we'll stick it right in the center. We got that nice clean blue smoke going. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Hey, we got a little bit of extra seasoning left in here. Let's sprinkle it on top. The more, the better, that's what I always say. Now go to sleep, little pastrami. Now we always show us putting the meter into our meat, but I wanna show you a couple of things you can do. You can track everything right on your phone, all right? Here shows our internal temperature of our pastrami right now is at 124. Our target temperature we're shooting for at 165 before we get to the next step. And we're actually cooking at 278 degrees. Now remember, this is at the grate level, okay? It's always gonna be different between your dome thermometer. Dome thermometer is right on 250. So but at the meat level, it's 278. So it's gonna estimate the cooking time. It's gonna tell us in just a little while. So we'll just let it go and then we'll be done. All right, so we're done with the smoking portion of our pastrami. Now for the next part. Normally in a brisket, you take it, you wrap it in foil, right? We got the foil out here. Well, guess what? We're not doing that. No, no, no. The way we're gonna do our pastrami is a little bit different. I'm gonna take this Dutch oven and put a rack in here. Now my rack is a little bit short, nice rack. So I made some kind of aluminum foil balls here. I'm just gonna set them in here and put this rack on top of that, okay? Because what we're gonna do is we are gonna pour water into the bottom. Now normally I cook this to 165 degrees. This is a little bit beyond that, but what I wanted to do is I want to get this bark nice and set. This has got a hard bark. I know it's not as black as you might think it would be, but that is a hard, crispy bark. So I'm going to set that on there. I'm going to pull the meter thermometer out of there. Okay. Put the lid on. We're going to put it back on the egg. Okay. Like that. And we're going to crank it open. We're going to crank it up. We're going to get it to about 500 degrees and let this thing really steam. We want to get that water boiling and flowing and getting that pastrami nice and steamed so that we have a nice, tender, super, super tender bite. That's what we're going to do now. And with that, five hours later, our pastrami is done. So I know that it's done because what we did is we opened it up here. And you can see the water's still boiling away in here and it's almost gone. But the pastrami is probe tender. I've stuck a, a skewer into it actually and it just went in like butter, baby, like butter. So we're gonna take that off of there because this egg's been rolling at 500 degrees for quite a while now. All right, and take a look at this. Ready? The big reveal. Oh, and there it is. And now let's see what we've got. The beautiful part about this is that we don't, oh yeah, nice and tender. We don't have to let this rest, okay? Because what happened is we steamed it, so we want it to be nice and moist and like that, and it's all good. So all the juices are still in there. It stayed plenty, plenty moist for the whole entire thing. So all we have left to do now, start slicing. Oh man, it smells like a New York deli in here. Oh, that is so good, so good. Now look at that, is that beautiful or what? Only one thing I gotta do. New York pastrami, oh yeah. Now in true New York deli style tradition, we're gonna build us a beautiful pastrami sandwich and then we're gonna eat. First thing, spicy mustard. I got some mustard from our friends at Sabret. Remember that hot dog video we did? You remember the hot dog video. Well, it's spicy brown mustard, that's what you want. The other thing you want, New York rye bread. Forget about it, you gotta have the good New York rye bread. So, nice coating of mustard, yeah. You know, at the beginning of the video I talked about Katz's Deli's Pastrami. It's the most famous deli in the world. You ever saw the movie When Harry Met Sally? That famous scene, you know, ah, ah, that scene? Yeah, that was filmed there. So in any case, we're gonna build this. I wanna remind you of something really cool. This is so full of flavor, you can't imagine. You know what we didn't add to it? You notice we didn't put it in? Any salt. We added zero salt. We soaked it for a day to get the salt out of it. And trust me, it's still got plenty of salinity in it. So I can't wait anymore. I'm gonna build this sandwich and get to eating. All right, the reason I have this big giant smile on my face, I grew up in New York eating New York deli sandwiches and we have recreated New York's greatest deli sandwich. It is outstanding. If you don't think you can make pastrami at home, do it. Corned beefs are gonna be on sale all over the place right now. It's a great time of year to buy them. So get your corned beef, desalinate it, and make yourself pastrami. It's so stupid good. I mean like, I'm, I've made it before. This one is extra good, all right? so. Listen, if you don't want to go through breaking up the seeds at the beginning, that's fine. Use coriander powder, use, use ground black pepper. That's fine, you can use it. But that little bit of extra texture on the bark is just outstanding. I mean, hey, forget about it. It's delicious over here. Oh, that is just so good. So listen, as always, okay, if you saw any of the items that we used in this video, there's a link below down in the description. <clears throat> there is also a full recipe and blog down below too. So click on that link. 
you want to make this, the full recipe is written out. Same goes for every video we make, all right? We try and be friends to the community. We want to help you. So if you have anything you'd like to see us make, put it down in the comments. We want to know what you want to see us cook, all right? So until the next time, remember to do this. Get out and grill, and I'll see you the next time on The Fogo Life.